I'm a colleague of uh, Boaz, and uh, it's wonderful to be a colleague of Boaz. <laughs> and uh, my uh, own uh, uh, specific uh, uh, interesting uh, field is uh, the deals with uh, Jewish uh, medical activities uh, during the Holocaust. I teach uh, a few courses here, uh, in this subject and other subjects. And uh, a brief, yes, this is what you want, Boaz. So I think it's enough. Uh, all, okay, okay. Um, both, yes, okay. Both my parents are a survivor, and uh, it caused to me, caused me to make an intense uh, study in this field. They are coming from uh, Poland and uh, Hungary, so you can understand. Okay, thank you. Good morning. My name is Malena Chinski or Chinski. I come from Buenos Aires and I'm a PhD candidate in social science and I am working my dissertation on Holocaust memory in Argentina. Raise your voice a bit, please. Okay. Um, the first uh, decade after the war and by, um, uh, from the perspective of the Jewish community of Buenos Aires, who, by the way, were the only ones speaking about the Holocaust in this period, and why I am doing this work, um, I just I I found the paradox that um, at least in, in Buenos Aires, the Holocaust was not being forgotten, but all this universe of people who remembered and tried to find meaning about the past that was forgotten. And I went to the um, just a very brief anecdote. I went to the um, uh, generation, generations of the Shoah, which is the second generation institution, and spoke with the director and asked him about documents, and he said, oh, your topic, this, you're going to have a hard task because nothing was done. And I was just looking in front of me, the whole library of Sharita Pleita, where all the books that I will be talking about later, they were all there, Yiddish books, the whole huge book collection that was published in Buenos Aires these years, and like the fact that he was not able to read them meant that they didn't exist. So I thought, okay, this is something that should be corrected in, if possible. So that's why I, am, I decided to do research on this topic. Thanks. Hello, everyone. My name is Mikola Balaban. I'm a PhD candidate in history from Ukraine. Uh, I am, uh, my, my project is about uh, kind of like new perspective it's about microhistory. I want to make microhistory of violence uh, in Lviv in uh, 1941. Uh, so to uh, and try and I, I have the very hard uh, a lot of questions, but uh, to, to, to try to, to make some kind of like uh, reconstruction of, of, of violence. And uh, I'm here to. Uh, uh, to know more about using testimonies in history research. But why did you choose this subject? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, uh, this subject is very important now for Ukraine, I think, from my perspective, uh, for uh, Ukrainian historiography, because uh, Ukraine, Ukrainian historiography is very, it's not like divide, but undeveloped uh, in, the, in the Holocaust Holocaust studies in particular, mm -hmm. and uh, something like new, New studies, new perspectives uh, of uh, Second World War, uh, yeah, and uh, it's, it's. I think it's important and interesting for me. My name is uh, Anna Medvedovska. I live and uh, study and work in Ukraine, in Dnipropetrovsk, Eastern Ukraine, and uh, the, I'm also a PhD student. And um, the topic of my research, PhD research, is um, the Holocaust in Ukraine in the public thoughts um, of the end of 20th, the beginning of 21st century. And um, as you understand, I'm going uh, to strongly involve their oral history sources. And uh, that's why I'm here, because uh, sometimes it can be challenging um, for me as so for a young researcher. Uh, to use uh, these materials uh, and uh, as for my motivation, why, why did I choose the, this topic uh, um, that's connected with my work? Because I work in the uh, Ukrainian Center for Holocaust Studies in Dnipropetrovsk and the museum, one of the first Holocaust museum 
uh, in Ukraine and uh, also have some personal motivation stories of my family as well. I chosen this topic, thank you. Uh, hello everyone, uh, my name is Joanna Krause, I'm from Poland, from the city of Lublin. Uh, I am a PhD student uh, in political science mm -hmm. and I'm preparing a dissertation on the policy of memory in Polish-Israeli relations after 1990. So I deal with the post-memory uh, of the Holocaust in modern societies of Poland and uh, of Israel. Uh, I'm also an educator and a guide. Uh, I'm a guide in Majdanek State Museum and a guide in uh, Jewish district of Lublin and the Jewish history of Lublin uh, region, which is uh, Eastern Poland. And why I do what I do, uh, the shortest answer would be it's because I'm Polish. Uh, it happens that uh, the Holocaust mainly happened on our soil and uh, the half of the number of the victims were citizens of uh, Poland and they consisted 10% of the citizens uh, of Poland. So I believe it's an important part of my Polish history and my Polish national heritage. And for many years, uh, mainly for political reasons, uh, the memory of Holocaust in Poland was neglected, as probably most of you know. Uh, so it's like kind of personally important for me to to remember and to develop this memory in, in poor society. Thank you. Yes, hello, my name is Verena Busa. I'm um, working for a historical magazine in Germany. It's the Werkstatt Geschichte. I'm a member of the editorial board and um, I'm uh, one of the co-editors and from April on I will uh, teach at Humboldt University and the reason why I'm here is that more or less since 10 years uh, my academic work focuses on children, on child survivors, specifically on children who survived the concentration camps and now my interest uh, are the Jewish children centers in the American occupation zone and the repatriation of Polish children to Poland and other topics and issues and what is interesting for me to um, develop um, some kind of criteria on how to work uh, specifically with uh, child survivors' testimonies, the specific aspects we can find there and um, what they can tell us and so on, these issues. My name is David Wildermuth. I'm uh, from New York originally. I'm now a professor of German at Shippensburg University. So uh, I'm not a historian by trade, uh, but a language guy. Uh, also have a, uh, a doctorate not in history but in German and in Russian and um, have used this for uh, my research. My dissertation was on a particular uh, Wehrmacht division looking at the question that Browning had uh, uh, perhaps answered earlier about ordinary men but it struck me when I was reading uh, about this topic that there was no equivalent work dealing with the German army, uh, of course, the, was dealing with the reserve police battalion, Browning's work. So I wanted to look at that as a German professor, the idea, again, of, of this German identity, evolving German identity. Um, why I chose this subject? Well, the deeper that I got into it, the more I saw that the perspective of the victims was lacking in most every one of these, uh, well, in Western historiography. and was very happy to be able to, while I was researching this division at uh, the Center for Advanced Holocaust Studies, stumble upon this USC Foundation uh, uh, oral testimony collection. And um, that provided the impetus to try and merge the perpetrator and victim perspectives to, to get a little bit, hopefully, closer to, to the truth, but also, as we've been talking about previously, to, uh, to give voice to the victims, or to at least have their voice heard in, uh, in the publications dealing with the time and the event. Hi, I'm Amy Smith. I'm a PhD candidate at Yale University doing a joint degree in Religious Studies and History. My dissertation is on the family life of Holocaust survivors in the immediate aftermath of the war. I focus on Jews primarily from Poland who went to the DP camps and then emigrated to the United States and Canada. And as to why I do 
what I do and how I got interested in this particular topic. Uh, I became really interested in what the Holocaust meant to those who survived it uh, and particularly how it affected them and the idea of adjustment um, and how trauma uh, interrelates with adjustment to a lack of a better word, normal world. And so that kind of led me to looking at family life as a site where adjustment is very, uh, very much a key issue. Hello, my name is Katarina Kralova. I'm from Charles University in Prague. Uh, I'm a lecturer and researcher uh, at the Faculty of Social Science in International Area Studies. And uh, I'm regionally specializing uh, on the Balkans uh, in general and on Greece uh, in particular. Uh, what I'm researching is uh, a post-war society reconstruction and reconciliation not only uh, as regards the Second World War, but let's say also Greek Civil War afterwards and, and some other issues. Uh, the question, why? <laughs> uh, why testimonies? Um, uh, I have been working uh, with testimonies in different contexts for quite a long time. Uh, during my studies, I worked on uh, a Czech literary immigration in Vienna. Uh, collecting their testimonies uh, in Austria and in Czechoslovakia or later on Czech Republic. <clears throat> uh, in the uh, last few years uh, I was collecting together with my uh, students the testimonies of Greek Civil War survivors living in Czechoslovakia and uh, uh, within the last few years I also traveled several times to Greece and uh, collected testimonies uh, of uh, Jewish survivors uh, living in Greece. Uh, in the uh, last two years, uh, when uh, the Visual History Archive was placed in Prague as well, uh, I started to, to visit the collection and we started a huge project with uh, 14 case studies on the central, southeastern, eastern Europe and Soviet Union uh, reflecting uh, the testimonies in uh, this archive where I did the Greek part. Uh, and of course I have some personal ties, uh, ties as well, uh, listening to the story of my grandmother being a child uh, who was a um, survivor of the Holocaust. Uh, somehow it all came together in a connection in the last few years and that's what I'm doing right now. Thank you. Hello, my name is Alexandra Luvanau. I'm a postdoctoral fellow in history of medicine at Oxford Brookes University. I work on constructing life stories of victims of Nazi medical experiments, focusing on Polish Jews, men, who were subjected to X-ray sterilizations and excisions of testicles at Auschwitz. Um, why this particular topic? I've worked on, in this area for about six years now. I focused on men because it's a topic that is a kind of taboo, hasn't been actually developed in the historiography. Moreover, I'm hoping by presenting background and wartime experiences and post-war period of these men to kind of uh, highlight what kind of individuals they were, who were the people behind the statistics. Uh, moreover, I'm hoping to present, um, to kind of develop uh, the victim group as they were, whether there were, whether there were any patterns between them. My name is Tomasz Rukowski. I, I am from Warsaw. I work in the <coughs> Institute of Literary Research uh, of Polish Academy of Sciences uh, in the Department of, uh, of the Literature and Social Communication. And uh, we uh, try to, uh, to um, unite um, uh, the literary studies and the study of public uh, discourse. So uh, now um, uh, I am in the uh, in the research group which um, cope with the categories of Polish discourse about uh, about the Holocaust, and we try to to show the uh, how the majority uh, uses um, how how they create the the image of the Holocaust to confirm the self uh, uh, identity as self self image. 
Uh, and uh, uh, the testimonies uh, play a, a great role in, in that because uh, we, uh, we, we see uh, that uh, they are formulated uh, in the particular net of forces, field of forces, and the pressure of the majority uh, society is very strong here. So uh, the uh, people which, uh, which um, uh, tell these stories, uh, uh, they are up on the pressure, and they tell us one thing, they silence another thing, so we we try to uh, to uh, to show the social mechanism, the social rituals which uh, which produce that 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 field of, of forces. And uh, why why I am uh, with uh, with that issue? Because uh, uh, because the the relationships between Jews and Poles are the model in Polish society of the uh, of the relationship between major, majority majority and uh, minority. And I feel that um, that the declaration of the social mechanism c could c can help uh, in uh, uh, in uh, uh, building much uh, more, more egalitarian society in Poland. So <laughs> that's the that's the, the issue. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Eva Kozminska Freilak. I work for a Jewish Historical Institute in Warsaw. I am sociologist. Uh, I am a, uh, a PhD candidate. Uh, my PhD thesis will be on uh, post-war strategies of adaptation implemented by uh, Polish uh, Jews uh, just after the war, I mean in the late 40s. Uh, uh, since I graduated from my uh, first degree, I uh, I work, I used to work uh, with uh, testimonies uh, and uh, first of all to pick up uh, data then I realized that uh, uh, working with the testimonies you, you, you should have keys to, to understand what really people meant while, uh, uh, while saying what, what they say. And uh, why I'm interested uh, in that uh, PhD particular uh, subject, because I am also a participant of that project that Tomek told, uh, is uh, first of all because uh, uh, when I started to study the Holocaust history, uh, uh, it was something uh, unbelievable for me that uh, those people who survived managed to recreate uh, their lives. and. Uh, uh, I started to ask my que myself question how it was possible and if they really managed. Uh, and second, secondly, it's also my family story, so I am personal. I am involved in person, so that's all. My name is Ferenc Lotso. I originally come from Budapest, Hungary. Currently, I work in uh, Germany in the, at the University of Jena, uh, at a center devoted to Eastern Europe in the 20th century. I wrote my dissertation back at the Central European University on Hungarian Jewish uh, cultural and intellectual institutions and publications of the 1930s and early 40s, so uh, the years of uh, persecution and, and uh, increasing exclusion played a major role and also the way the Hungarian Jewish community related to the, to the ongoing Holocaust before uh, 1944. Uh, I am currently working on my second book, so this, this was my, my first book which is now out in, in uh, Hungarian and I hope to have an English version, uh, which is about the early post-war years, so I'm looking at the period 45 um, uh, to 48 practically, so until the, the Stalinist regime was uh, consolidated in Hungary, and I'm looking at different things, so early historiography, uh, testimonies, also written recollections and the war crime trials, which play a huge, uh, huge role, but this is ongoing uh, uh, research. Uh, concerning my motivation, well, that, that would take, I guess, uh, fairly long to, to elaborate it at, at, uh, in an adequate uh, manner. But uh, what I can say uh, now is that uh, I went to what used to be the, the Jewish gymnasium of, of uh, Budapest before the, the Holocaust, and I went there during the 90s, which was, of course, a time when there was a Jewish revival. There was also a, a huge interest in the history of the Holocaust, of course, and there was also a, a reemergence of anti-Semitism. And I think if you take these... Uh, these three factors uh, together, you can sort of explain what, what motivated me uh, in some, some uh, ways, namely, um, I guess there's a moral component, uh, which is a, it's a form of recognition. There's a political uh, or civil component, which is sort of like challenging di historical distortions or falsifications, which are, I think, quite, uh, quite strong in, in, in where, I, where I come from. 
Uh, and I guess this adds up to something like I want to, of course, do something analytical. So it's not only the moral and the, and the civic uh, commitment, but it's, it's something like an analytical, analytical pursuit. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Bettina Siertsema. I'm from the Netherlands and I teach at the VU University in Amsterdam. I have a, a literary background and um, my PhD thesis was on the uh, diaries and memoirs as they were published in books, uh, as books, uh, about the uh, concentration camps. And um, I think my first question was, uh, was a theological one. I wanted to know how people looked upon God when they went through these experiences and if they could maintain their faith or not and why not or why they could maintain it. And then, uh, reading these, these uh, written testimonies, I, um, I got interested also very much in, the, in questions of humanity. So, how could people maintain their humanity in these circumstances? And then it shifted from, from the survivors and, or the victims to the perpetrators. So, it's quite a complex <laughs> uh, of, of questions, but now I'm focusing more on the, on the perpetrators, but from the views of the survivors. Uh, I'm Mirna Zakic. I teach German history and the history of the Holocaust at Ohio University in the, obviously, United States. Um, and I got my PhD from the University of Maryland about uh, focusing on the ethnic German community in the Serbian Banat. That's the northeasternmost part of Serbia, of which you will hear much more tomorrow during my presentation. But specifically when dealing with Holocaust testimonies, my interest is twofold. Uh, for my current research project, it was important because there is very little material on the Holocaust in Yugoslavia or Serbia, and there is almost nothing on the Holocaust in the Banat. So I literally had to construct this story from two sets of written testimonies, uh, which again I will discuss tomorrow afternoon in my presentation. And when I teach about the Holocaust, to my American students, I use a lot of written materials, memoirs, diaries, um, actual official testimonies, uh, second generation testimonies, because I find that I have to circumvent the, allow me a moment of cynicism, the average American undergraduate's desire for emotional catharsis. They say they want to know about the Holocaust. What they really want is the thrill of, OMG, this was so terrible, and then the final sense of, ah, but now things are so much better. They want it to be Spielberg. So I have to constantly um, balance out the emotional side of it with the factual side of it, and I find that uh, various kinds of testimonies are very, very useful for that. So. I'm Konrad Kwied, a professor of modern Jewish history and Holocaust studies at the University of Sydney. And I'm also the chief historian um, of the Sydney Jewish Museum. And for quite a long time, I was the chief historian of the Australian War Crimes Commission. As far as what I'm doing here is, if you read my introduction and my conclusion, I think you get a message what I'm doing. And within my paper, there are a few lines on my current research project. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Susanne Orban. I'm working at the uh, International Tracing Service. I'm the head of uh, historical research and education there. Before this, uh, I was working in Yad Vashem. And um, I'm now currently working on early testimonies because I'm working on displaced persons. So it's also intertwined. And I think the topic was not chosen by me, but I was chosen by the topic because many survivors told me their stories and I started to ask myself, how do they tell about their stories? What do they skip? What do they focus on? So it's, it was somehow this, this encounter which, which led me to the topic. Good morning, my name is John Goldlust. Uh, I'm from Australia. I grew up in Australia. I had an academic career as a sociologist until a few years ago. Then I decided, as you do when you retire, that one should uh, continue doing something. So I started writing a family history. Uh, about my parents who are long dead and um, their history involves them spending seven years inside the Soviet Union during the Second World War as Polish Jews where I was born. Um, I discovered that if what Boaz says about uh, the Jewish experience in the Holocaust not being the major story of World War II 
um, after the war, 70 years later, the fact that there were 300,000 Polish Jews inside the USSR is not exactly the major story in Jewish Holocaust history. And I thought more of that story should be told. I discovered that there were sources. I'm not a trained historian, but I understand uh, the obsession with uh, written material and, and testimonial material. So there were some of both, which no one, as far as I could tell, had really looked at in any systematic way. So I thought I'd better start to do it, as no one else was doing it. I'm Dieter Steinert from Wolverhampton University in England, United Kingdom. I've just finished a book and published it on, on Polish and Soviet for child forced laborers, non-Jewish child forced laborers, and I now continue my research uh, on, with the Jewish child forced laborers in and outside the camps. We are now in a, in a transition from where, where past becomes history, and maybe that's the last chance to, to have a look at gaps in, in, in testimonies. And during my research, and, and I mean it very seriously, there, there are gaps. Also, Boas has rightly said, we, we might have too many testimonies, but we have too many gaps. And I do not talk about the non-tellable parts of <coughs> survivor stories. I'm telling, I'm, I'm telling about the tellable uh, parts of survivors' stories. I will talk about that on, on Thursday in, in a bit more detail, and maybe that's now the last chance to fill some of the gaps which are obviously there. Hi, my name is Ken Walzer. I'm a professor of history at Michigan State University, where I also direct Jewish studies. Um, I'm trained not as a Holocaust historian, but as an American social historian. I used to do immigration history. Um, and I have been teaching about the Holocaust for about 30 years, and I discovered the same methods that I used to study immigrants are now acce uh, accessible and usable to study people living in extreme conditions in the concentration camps. Uh, since the opening of ITS, uh, since the availability of large numbers of testimonies, you can write bottom-up social history inside the camps, and that has intrigued me and pulled me to the subject. I'm writing a book on rescue of children and youths at Buchenwald, um, and uh, I also direct a summer uh, program on teaching and researching with testimonies. And because I demanded that everybody in that program have a project, uh, I also developed a project to study the Marischule uh, at, at Auschwitz, which is what I'm going to be talking about here. Um, I got into the subject uh, in, in a narrow historiographical way, I wanted to explode the template by which rescue history during the Holocaust is written. Um, there's a lot of uh, what I think is very silly stuff about altruism and good people and good communities doing good things. And I understand rescue also uh, 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 proceeding in a variety of ways, including rescue as resistance, rescue as conspiracy, rescue as uh, networked activities. Uh, and so I looked at Buchenwald as a place to try and develop that uh, uh, approach. Um, but I also am interested in this. I don't have any Holocaust connection in my family history. Um, but I'm interested in this uh, because there's nothing like teaching this subject in, in, in the schools. Uh, I, don't, I don't have the same experience you have at Ohio State. Uh, uh, at Ohio, okay, I'm oh, sorry. Um, uh, I have students who are hungry uh, for the subject. They're hungry to study uh, what only testimonies and memoirs can allow us to study, and that is life lived beyond extreme conditions. Um, and uh, it's pulled me into the subject and turned me from an immigration historian into a Holocaust historian. My name is Boaz Cohen, and uh, actually I'm an historian of the day after the Holocaust. This is what I did in my PhD. I'm interested in the way people came out of the Holocaust and started uh, researching it. It comes from my very uh, interest in the way history is written. Not only Holocaust, any history. Uh, why do I do this? Uh, we have, I, I have no Holocaust connections in the family. I mean, nothing that was talked about, or we did find an aunt now that was in the Warsaw Ghetto, in the Lodge Ghetto, but this is new to me. I, knew, I know this only for three months. Before that, I could say we have no connection just Israeli with a very strong uh, Israeli and Jewish identity, so the Holocaust is very apparent here. 
And uh, my interest in this it was actually in the way people come out of this extreme situation and start writing history. And that's the way I reached into this. Of course, once you touch the testimonies and you start reading them, then the world is uh, and there is a world of experience and emotion in this, and uh, everyone who teaches Holocaust knows that you have, always have to navigate the emotions and uh, radical stories with teaching academically about the subject. Thank you. <laughs>